Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon XF400 and 405 video training series. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the key AF features of the camera, so let's get started. Today we are at Flag & Wire, which is in McMinnville, Oregon, in the Granary District. And if you hear any ambient noise, it's because we are connected to a brewery and restaurant as well. We get to work with Matthew today, who's a barista here, and it's a perfect environment to show you the AF features in the camera system, specifically dual pixel CMOS AF. Now this is the first ENG style camera that has dual pixel CMOS AF, which we see in other camera systems like the C300 Mark II, the C700, and the C200. With the new one inch sensor that's in this camera, and with people who are using this camera usually being in a small to no crew situation, this AF system is gonna help you tremendously in terms of making sure that you are nailing focus. The face detection alone is amazing. Let's jump into the menu system and take a look at our AF options in the camera. And this is the second page of the camera setup menu and we can see all of our options here. So by default, the first thing that we will see that is not grayed out is AF frame size. And we have three parameters here. Automatic, which means that it's going to automatically decide how large that AF frame size needs to be to keep something in focus or to latch onto it. We have large and we have small. So let's just go ahead and switch this to large and step out of the menu and I'm going to now show you that we have this large AF box that allows us to use the touch screen and we get touch AF and that makes it really easy to latch onto a larger area of our subject matter. This is gonna be a great example of our touch AF but right now my AF frame is a little large for it to be precise in terms of what I'm doing so I'm gonna just go in and change my frame size to small, step out of that, and now I am ready to choose objects very, very precisely. So let's just go ahead and start on this shot glass here, and Matthew's gonna go ahead and make a drink. So he's over there, and if I wanted to, I could see a little bit of that action over there, touch there, and of course my AF speed is set to slow the way I like it to be set and that allows me to get these nice rack focuses. So I'm on this shot glass that goes over to there. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to that. And he's pouring milk, and then he's gonna come over here and he's gonna actually steam the milk. So we're watching this whole process happen, and as soon as that pitcher comes in, I'm gonna to touch on there, and we're in focus on there. And let's see what's going on. That's almost done. And while he cleans that, Good, and we're going to now, that cleans off, and we tilt down, and he is making the drink, and again, if I just want to make sure that I'm tack sharp there, and we're going to touch right there, there we go, and there is the drink. Now we're gonna go back into the menu and you can see here, once we change our AF frame size to small or to large, we have options in terms of AF mode, which was previously grayed out. There are two options inside of this menu. We have continuous and AF boosted MF. Continuous is exactly what you think it would be. It is a continuous AF system. When we switch it to AF boosted MF, which means autofocus boosted manual focus, it means that we can be more precise with our autofocus system. We can actually focus in on a particular part of a frame and then the camera will kick in and help get that autofocus, but it will latch onto that and it can be a reliable focus point that will not change after that. So that is a great feature on the camera system when you need to use it. Let's turn our face detection and tracking off and when I do that, it will allow me to talk to you about one of my favorite features that I've been using on Cinema EOS cameras, which is this focus guide. 
So I'm going to turn the focus guide on and I think it's most effective when we're using that in a manual focus mode. And there's a couple of ways that we can get to manual focus. We can use the function menu here and go down and switch it to manual focus. Or we can go ahead and use assignable button number one, which by default will switch between manual focus and autofocus. Once it's activated, you'll see here that on the screen, when I start to change my focus, I have too close focus. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just start with the flowers. And then I'm tack sharp there. And it happens to be at three feet. And of course, Matthew is further away. So we can see our focus guide is telling us that. So I'm going to turn to the left. And then as soon as it turns green, we have tack sharp focus. So that is a very, very useful feature, especially when you are manually focusing. I'm going to go back into the menu now and turn my focus guide off and turn my face detection and tracking back on. This is ideal when you're shooting interviews and also in run and gun situations where you have multiple people and you will see based on these examples here how effective it can be. And we are going to talk about these other two parameters here which are AF speed and AF response. What does AF speed mean? It just means how fast the camera system is going to try to get autofocus. So it is either going to be set to its default, which is normal, which you would use in most situations. Fast, that would mean that you want to touch the screen and you want it to snap focus in terms of whatever the subject matter or object is that you are trying to focus on. Or you could change it to slow, which to me would be what we would use, let's say, for instance, for a rack focus. It'll seem more natural when you use that because generally we don't instantly snap focus on an object or a subject matter. Additionally, we have our AF response. And this is something that you're going to have to try in a real world production environment. What does response mean? It means how long is the camera going to take, not to autofocus, but when other things come into the frame or other objects come into the frame, how long is it going to take for those to latch onto those subjects? So let's say we had one person in the frame and we were focused on them and then they exited frame and somebody else came in. How long would it take for that response to happen? And that is what we consider our AF response. And we have a default of normal, we also have slow, and we have fast. As you can see right now, we have a white box on our subject matter in the foreground and a gray box on our subject matter in the background. And if I just wanted to do a rack, all I have to do is just touch that gray box and it will go ahead and rack to the other subject. So that's how easy it is to use that feature on the camera system. And the box changes because now we have face detection. So you'll see that that's locked in and you'll see there and it's actually tracking that subject matter and it's continuing to track and then if I reset that you'll see that now we see Matthew and I can switch over to Matthew and it's locking on Matthew and so that is exactly how easy it is to use this face detection system. So you'll have to try these in combination AF speed and AF response go hand in hand and it's really real world experience which will allow you to see how those are working together. So those are some of the AF features in the XF400 and the 405. And I have to tell you, a lot of people are using them in the Cinema EOS cameras. And the fact that we have them now in this ENG style camera is fantastic. Getting critical focus is essential when you are shooting 4K. So please use these features when it's appropriate to your projects. Thanks for watching.